After two weeks of preparations in beautiful conditions, both Terenure and Clontarf would have to adapt to very greasy conditions for their Ulster Bank League semi-final at Lakelands. After just two minutes, referee Stuart Gaffigan gave the visitors an opportunity to open the scoring on the 10 metre line when Terenure were penalised for a high tackle. Matt Darcy struck his attempt very well. It had plenty of distance, but it struck the upright. It remained nil all. After 10 minutes, Darcy was given his second opportunity to get Tarf on the board, but this time his attempt was pulled to the left. After just over a quarter of an hour, both sides had given very little away. Referee Gaffigan penalised Tarf this time for coming in the side, and the Terenure out half James Thornton's strike was accurate but it fell short of the target and it remained nil all. With just under five minutes to go before half time, the first creak appeared in either defence when Tarf out half Evan Ryan dummied to decoy runners and broke the first line of defence. He found support on his left shoulder, but brave defence caused a knock on. A KG first half ended Terenure nil, Clontarf nil. As the second half started, the healthy crowd at Lakelands were certainly hoping that both sides would burst into action and three minutes in, Tarf prop Royce Burke Flynn was penalised for coming in the side. Thornton stood up, struck it well but this time he pushed it wide. Scores remained nil all. With just under 10 minutes played in the second half, Tarf went through the phases from the line out and forced a penalty on their opponent's 22 when the home side's number eight, Kyle McCoy, strayed offside. Darcy made no mistake with his third effort, the first score of the game, Terenior nil, Clontarf three. Five minutes later, Clontarf worked the ball left to right and then into the midfield where they drew another penalty from the Terenure defence. This time it was for not staying on your feet. Darcy's attempt to stretch the lead for Clontarf was pushed wide. It remained 3-0 to Clontarf. 20 minutes into the second half, Clontarf captain Sam Cronin was substituted and his replacement Dermot O'Mara didn't have the best of starts. But it was Evan Ryan's kick that was blocked down and Terra Neuer almost came away with a try, but the ball was held up over the Clontarf line. O'Mara was then sin-binned as Tarf gave away multiple penalties. Terenure captain O'Neill opted to give Thornton another shot at goal and this time his attempt was pushed across the face of the posts. Clontarf then had a very promising attack gaining field position inside the Terenure 22 when Evan Ryan opted for a chip to the corner for Robles to chase but the greasy conditions made the touchdown just a stretch too far. 10 minutes to go and the crowd were finally able to get involved. Tarf grunted on with Royce Burke Flynn in the midfield and then it was the backs who punched up the middle. Referee Gaffigan was on hand and was very clear with his decision to sin bin second row Kevin O'Dwyer. Darcy doubled Tarf's lead from in front of the posts. Terenure nil, Clontarf six. That score seemed to spur the home side into action. They immediately turned around and almost got over the line with the crowd cheering more in hope than in knowledge as referee Gaffigan signalled for a knock-on over the line. Tarf left off the hook. As time ticked on, Tarf ran the ball from well inside their own half and unfortunately for the home side, the otherwise impressive Kevin O'Neill's cover tackle on Max McFarlane was dangerous and high and that would be his last action in the match. With tired bodies all over the park, Tarf almost killed off the game on the stroke of 80 minutes when Tony Ryan got over the line, but again was held up. Two minutes later, in the second minute of injury time, Tarf probed and probed for the first try of the game and referee Gaffigan penalised the home side for not releasing and Darcy popped it over for his third successful kick of the day. That was the last action from Lakelands in a tense and cagey affair.
So Torf remain on track for two league titles in a row, and they go on to the final to face Lansdowne.